All right, guys, so it's been a couple of days since the Melbourne Card Fair where I set up as a seller for the very first time. I did promise in the vlog that I was going to be doing a separate review video, going through what went well as a dealer for the first time, anything that I felt like that may have needed improvement, and how much I specifically sold. If you do want to know how much I specifically sold, I left it till the end, so make sure you watch the entire video. So first, let's go through things that I felt like could have had some improvement. Uh, I've got a massive list that I was writing down during the show itself because I felt like there was a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, let's get started with it. The very first thing I would have done is utilize the space better, but that's also partly my fault, just not knowing uh, how, how big the tables were. Uh, in the end, I ended up bringing three boxes of value boxes, uh, two slab boxes and a display case. I even mentioned uh, at the very start of my vlog when I was previewing everything that I had a little bit of space off to the side. I even joked about it to a few people uh, and I said to them like, look, if you wanna have that space there and do some trading or even sell your cards, I'm more than happy for you to occupy the space. Uh, no one took me up on the offer, but next time I think I'm gonna bring another couple uh, bargain bin boxes. Number two, and this sort of goes with the first point as well, not bringing enough cards, but I'd say more so not bringing enough extra cards, more so for the fact that if cards do sell in the value boxes or the showcase, that I'm sort of refilling it just as needed because yeah, a few cards did resell, uh, sorry, did, did sell from the showcase itself. Uh, and I was sort of picking cards from the slab box to kind of put back in, but just having those extra cards to put in, I think something that would be really handy in my own opinion is for me to probably get like a, a, a Zion case or something like that, just so that I can carry extra cards with me. Uh, a lot of people had their own cases themselves when it came to trading or they were even potentially trying to sell to me. Uh, but yeah, I think I need a case myself. I don't have one, but if there's anyone out there watching that is uh, that runs a case business and wants to sponsor me, please hit me up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I think I'll need for the next show. Number three, uh, and this is obviously my fault, but I needed to bring more loose change and more specifically $5 notes uh, and $10 notes to an extent as well, but definitely the $5 notes. Definitely had enough gold coins, but the main uh, sort of thing that people were buying from me were from the value boxes. So when it came, comes to value boxes and stuff like that, you're kind of dealing with smaller currency. Uh, and yeah, but towards the middle and to the end of it. I know there are a few people that watch the channel that uh, did buy from me uh, and I did have to give them some gold coins. So I apologize for that, but next time I do have to bring some more $5 notes. I even joked about it. I had one guy buy uh, two cards off me or maybe one card off me and it ended up totaling $10. Uh, he gave me two $5 notes and I was actually saying to him that these $5 notes are worth like $10 each to me just because of how fast they were leaving my possession. Number four, and I was actually quite surprised by this considering uh, the demand for it, but bringing a bit of a bit more variety when it comes to other sports. So when it came to my showcase, I actually don't think it was too bad. Uh, I had about 60 to 65% NBA, I'd say about 25 to 30% NFL, uh, and then the rest was like a sprinkling of like MLB and AFL, uh, and yeah, a bit of UFC as well. However, when it came to the value boxes, I reckon it was like 80 to 85% NBA, uh, probably about 10% NFL, uh, and then again, a little bit of each, uh, every other sport. I was actually very surprised at how many people were coming up to me and asking me uh, like if I had NFL or, or, or soccer or baseball. I had a few people ask about wrestling as well, but yeah, NBA and NFL are like my bread and butter sort of two sports. So I should have focused on maybe not having equal 50% NBA, 50% NFL, but maybe bringing it up to like a... I don't know, 60 to 55% uh, NBA and then 35% NFL uh, because there weren't too many sellers there at the, at the card fair itself that were, that were selling NFL. And I think NFL was trending at the moment just leading into the NFL season. So it did make sense that people were looking for it. Number five, uh, shout out to my man, Ash from Shiny Card Traders. He was actually my neighbor uh, at the Melbourne Card Fair. A really good friend of mine from the card community. He actually does have a YouTube channel as well that he's starting. So go check him out, especially if you love your Pokemon. He does dabble in a little bit of sports as well. He hit me up after the show just saying to me, you know, what were your thoughts on your, your first time setting up? Uh, and we were speaking and he basically just gave me a couple tips. Uh, and one of them was to, you know, include a black tablecloth just to kind of make the white 
like we, we, we get provided with a white table. So just to make it pop a little bit more. And the second thing that he also said to me was to, you know, also look at some signage. I think that's a really good idea. Not more so for the people that watch your YouTube channel already, but more so for the people that are yeah, new and potential customers, because I can pump up the YouTube channel as well on top of me selling cards. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a really great idea. Last thing I'll speak about that I probably need to improve. And I don't really know what I can do about it, but if you bought from me on Sunday, you probably noticed that I took pictures of the front and the back of cards. That was more so for inventory. And so when it came to organizing everything at the end in terms of how much I made and all that sort of stuff, I knew what card be belonged to which lot. So as you guys know, I like to buy a lot of lots and I do have to separate them into obviously their individual lots. So if I do sell a card, I do I try to allocate it and work out which card belongs to which lot and what price to allocate towards it. I really don't know how to do it better. It only took a few seconds out of what I was doing, but I guess it was a little bit annoying, but I don't think anyone really cared about what I was doing as well. All right, let's go through the things that went well. And you know, even though I've gone through a lot of things that I felt like I could have improved on, felt like the majority of my selling experience for the very first time was mostly positive. I think another compliment that people were sort of telling me was how well organized things were. Uh, and I think when I was organizing and planning it all, I was trying to work out the best way to go about it. Uh, so I ended up obviously uh, allocating cards into lots or, or prices when it came to the value boxes, uh, putting a specific color and allocating it towards a price. So orange was $3, purple was $5, yellow was $10, and basically just sticky taping the top loader with that color. And it made everything so organized and people were just, I think I had about four or five people say to me like, this is really well organized, like how long did this take ya? Um, but obviously I had a lot of help in, in the background. I really only took on that idea because I've been watching a lot of videos from people in America at their card show and I really love that experience of, you know, people going up to tables, going through cards uh, and, you know, whether it's finding a card for your PC, uh, you know, finding a card to resell or just seeing cards that you've never seen before. I really think it adds to the experience. I think that's something that we kind of lack here in Australia, more so because we don't have the volume of cards that people have in, in America, but that's the experience I'm trying to bring to the card shows down here. And I've even seen people uh, in America provide chairs uh, for people at the front going through value boxes. Uh, and I was thinking about doing that here at the Melbourne Card Fair, but I don't think it's got really the space for it. But if the venue does expand, I'll think about doing that in the future because I felt sorry for a lot of people that were looking at cards and they're looking down for about half an hour. And I was just like, God, your necks are gonna be pretty cooked after this. Going along with the value boxes and the bargain bins, it was also probably the best selling point in terms of how much I made. I will go through that just after this, but I think in the future, I will be trying to focus a little bit more on the, the value boxes because like I said, I had way more to bring. I just didn't know how much space I had. So I'll be something I'll be definitely focusing on and it was definitely what people were so, sort of being uh, like looking at at my table. Definitely had people looking at my showcase and all that sort of stuff, but it was more so people were flicking through cards uh, and the majority of my sales ended up being from the bargain bins. All right, so let's go through the big number and this isn't to brag or anything like that. I just more so wanted to be transparent. I've always been like that with the YouTube channel. Uh, and I know when I hadn't set up before myself, I was asking people how much they sold. So it's really good to get a figure in your own head, but I'm not gonna waste any more time. I sold exactly exactly $2,126. Really, really happy with that one, uh, with that number there. And I'm also quite appreciative of everyone that came up to the table. Even if you didn't buy anything, you just said hello, I'm truly grateful for you guys. So if you wanna break that down exactly, I had two sort of high-end purchases of $300 each, totaling $600. And if you minus that from $2,100, uh, that leaves $1,500. So that $1,500 were basically all cards from the bargain bin or value box and they were all valued at under $20. And yeah, that just emphasizes my point that I just don't think that Australia really has the money for the high-end card. So I'd rather just send my high-end cards to America. And when it comes to card shows itself, Yes, I'll still bring high-end cards, but more so I want to focus on the value boxes. So if you want to combine that with other costs like the table, uh, that was $120 for two tables, like I said exactly. Uh, also had to shout uh, the work experience kid, AKA my girlfriend, uh, for helping me out. Shout out to her dinner, so that was a massive help to me. Uh, but yeah, ended up being a really great day overall. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it potentially gain some input into becoming a dealer yourself. I hope you guys do become dealers yourself because it just increases and adds to that variety of cards that are on display and for sale at card shows. Shout out to the Melbourne Card Fair. If you're down in Melbourne, uh, please do check it out. There is another one happening
starting mid uh, September next month. I think I will be setting up at it, so make sure you come down. And yeah, guys, like I said, I uh, appreciate you guys as always. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys all in future videos. Take care.